Can you do Leeds accent? Can you do Leeds accent? <laughs> <laughs> This is the official Leeds United podcast. Hello and welcome to the official Leeds United podcast. And I am delighted to tell you that the entire band is back together. Yes. Yes. Lads, please pretend to be a little bit more enthusiastic about that. I did. I clapped on my mic. Oh. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Pat. That's a bit of right. weeping or something. Thank you. <laughs> First off, Pat, on a serious note, yeah. how are you getting on? And when are you going to be back playing? Um, actually, really good, to be fair. I Last week, well, <laughs> this doesn't sound too good, but last week I hurt my ankle again. <laughs> oh, no. But it wasn't bad. Like, I twisted it just when I was outside doing, I was running, doing like full speed stuff and moving about. And they thought, oh, has, has he redone the injury? But really, it's just when they checked it. So the ligament was heal is pretty much healed. Obviously, it heals thicker than it originally mm. was. So mm. every every movement I do, it like catches on the ligament. Um, but now, I tried on Saturday with an anaesthetic, just doing like a full thing outside. It was fine. I think that's so more blood can flow through it to to heal it a little bit quicker. I think that's what it is. Yeah. We'll, we'll take Bex's word on that, Dr. Bex. Thank Bex. you, Dr. Bexford. <laughs> Listening on together. Pat, yeah. you've got a bit of an issue at home at the minute, haven't you? You're, you're a bit chilly. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, boiler went, didn't it? Packed in. Um, so Pat, That must be so difficult because with like 10 bedrooms to warm yeah. up, it must just be so tough. Yeah, but on the positive <laughs> side, I'm doing my part for the environment. So That's true. Saving That's energy. True. I've got a wood fire lit and... Got a few layers. Who on. lit the fire, Pat? Me. Who else lit, lit it? I mean, oh, that's definitely fair. a Michaela job, that. Let's be <laughs> <Yeah>. right. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. It, it's manual, so. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say the butler's off today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually Brilliant. did it, which I'm quite surprised at, but it is, it's roaring. So, yeah. not how, surprised How long me, did I it take you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long did it take you to get it going? About five seconds. Wow. What's a no, fully, it like, how, no, it didn't. What's it a bad like, drill, like, yeah. No, it did because I'll show you. Look, hang on one sec. This is the little tool that I use. He's not just put on like the, the fire, the log fire channel on Netflix and, and thought he's that's what he's done. He's got the remote control yeah. one, yeah. He? He's got <laughs> a remote control seconds. fire. Easy. Where he presses the button and it switches it all on. <laughs> it's electric. There's nothing wood burning about it. So basically, eco-friendly fire lights. Brilliant. Okay, yeah. And this bad boy. Is that just a lighter? Yeah, yes. yes is, is that not what they use to like, wow. you know, when you have things that are caramelized, that when they it's a blow burn yeah. the caramel? Creme brulee. Like yeah. A, a creme brulee, yeah. 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 I think it is actually a kitchen tool, <laughs> but it works to light the fire. So. <laughs> I'm very impressed with that, Pat. <laughs> very yeah. impressed. All leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Let's chat. Spurs, shall we, boys? Plenty of positives to take away from that game, although the result well, was, wasn't was what we would have wanted. Pat, what was the feeling like after that game? Um, I think it was one where we felt like we should have got more from it, to be fair, because first half, like, we looked like a top, top team. Like, we looked really good. There was just, it was literally getting that end, the end last or the last ball just wasn't quite there, but we had them penned in. Um, I think every player was out doing his, his opponent. And then, I don't know whether we kind of just ran out of steam a little bit in the second half. They came out a bit more pumped up. And they, they scored two scrappy goals, really. But, um, yeah, it was disappointing, especially after the way we did play first half. Matt, where were you watching it? Um, <clears throat> I was back in yeah back in, uh, in Florida in the pub. Uh, we had um, our first... Our first UK visitors, now the borders are open. Um, so there's a family that had come over um, to visit, you know, Orlando and the parks and they, they came to join us in the pub. So that was nice to have a few more faces watching the watching the game. Um, obviously, as Pat said, you know, the result wasn't what we hoped for and it certainly wasn't what I felt we deserved. You know, I agree with Pat. I thought we looked absolutely fantastic in the first half. I don't even think we were that bad in the second half, to be totally honest with you. I think that, um, as Pat said, maybe run out of a bit of steam. We've got so many injuries and and players out. You know, our bench was incredibly young. And you looked at that game at 1-0 at half time, which we thoroughly deserved. And you go, God, if we just had a couple of our senior players on the bench, 
that, that, that we would have been able to see that out completely. And, and I'd, I'd much, and I, know, I know we need points on the board, but at this that part of the season, I would much rather see a, a, a great performance, even if we don't get what we deserve, um, than sort of limp to a, to a draw rather unconvincingly. And that, that, to me, all that game showed me there is that once we get these players back, there's, 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 there's no lack of desire. There's no lack of quality. I think we're going to be, we're going to be just fine. And that, don't make no mistake, that's a, a bloody good team with now a great manager as well. Um, that we absolutely made look second class in that first in that first half. So, yeah, uh, frustration, of course, but I'm not concerned. Pat, for you, how frustrating is it for you when you're watching a performance like that and you know you can't come on and change the game? Uh, yeah, obviously it's frustrating, especially when there was a lot of times in the first half, especially where we got into great positions down the wings and there was no one in the box. Um, and I've, I'm looking at that thinking, like, someone's got to get there. Um, to be fair, before the game, it, it was either must have been on the Saturday when Joffy found out he was playing. Um, I said to him, "Just whatever you do, just shoot. Just when you get the ball, just shoot. Doesn't matter if you miss or whatever. Just keep shooting." And I thought until he his legs went in about the 60th minute, I thought he was unbelievable. Um, and that after the game, I was saying to him, "Like, good, you did what you had to do. You were strong. You held the ball up well, and you shot." I said, "The only thing is." If you play in nine, make sure you spend more time in the box and out of it. Because there was sometimes, and he was like, yeah, 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 I know. So he was listening. And I think he was just like kind of buzzing that he'd made his first start. But the way that he played, he looked like he'd started a fair few games. Like Pat said, that's Joffy's first game. And, and you really wouldn't have called it. If you just tuned into that and gone, OK, we've got strikes, young young player in defence. And then you've got Joffy starting his first game in the Premier League. You you would never have called that. You'd have thought these lads have been playing together comfortably for, for, for weeks. And we have I don't think we've fielded the same team two weeks in a row yet, have we? Probably I not don't, I, don't, no. I don't think we have. Um, so, you know, once we once we get these players back and we get a degree of consistency, um, I, I think I think we, those, those young kids are even just going to get better and better. Pat, how was Dan James after his first goal for Leeds United? Yeah, he was buzzing. I, gave, I went over to the box after him. Uh, when he came up after the game and um, he was just like, I was like, is that a big weight off your shoulders? He was like, yeah. So obviously he was really happy to score. And he said he should have scored a few more before in the games before or whatever, but he was he was really happy. And I think you saw it in the game after he scored. like He just had that kind of boost of confidence and he was trying things. And you can see the kind of what it did for him. The work ethic in that game, you know, the, the press was superb. The running was unbelievable. And I just think, mm. you know what? These guys should actually, even though it was a defeat, be holding their heads up and not be letting the actual result get them down because they 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 are firing. And once you know, once you, know, you had that game, you put Pat into that. I know he's here; he can he can big himself up as well. Yeah, you Pat, put Pat take into that game. You put Rafinha in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> put Rodrigo into that. You know, you you put like there's a, there's, a, there's a, yeah. five, five players you can put into that at half time or whatever. It doesn't happen. So you know, I don't want I don't want anyone in that team to be to be to be um, having their heads dropped because they're, they're doing everything right as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to move on very shortly, but Pat, just on that, yeah. heads aren't dropping, are they? Is motivation still there? Is is morale very high? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the lads, even though, look, there's been losses this year where afterwards the, the changing room is quiet and like you can tell that everyone's a bit down in the dumps. And I wasn't in the changing room after the game, but I was on the team bus afterwards and everyone was like seemed fine to be fair obviously disappointed that we hadn't come away with something but it wasn't the kind of loss where you think oh my god I don't know where we're going to go from here it was more like we did what we could um ultimately didn't quite get over the line but if we play like that more often than we don't and we're going to do well listening on together in your spare time pat as we know yeah. you are very focused on climate change it's something you're very outspoken about did you follow cop 26 that was obviously happening recently in glasgow yeah i did actually a bit and i was supposed to go um for the first night i believe it was on friday but because of the injury and stuff i couldn't um originally i was going to do something with the, the sky sports but you know david garrido yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I was going to do something alongside him, but I couldn't get down there. Um, so it's something I kept an eye on, but obviously wasn't actively involved in as I probably originally was going to be. 
Is it something you think you will be then in the future if you are fit and able to go? Uh, I think so. I think that obviously I'm going to start with smaller things like the easier for me to have an impact on kids and people who for some reason or another look up to me and will listen to what I say. <laughs> um, so I think starting with educating kids and stuff and obviously pushed on from there. It is, it is incredible because I know, Pat, I spoke to you in quite a bit of detail about it, but it is incredible, actually, just how much you've educated yourself on this and just how much of a change you want to make. Have you noticed in the time that you've been talking about it publicly, changes that have been made around you? Have people come to you and said, you know what, I've thought about what you said and changed X, Y, Z? Um, little bits. Do you know... <laughs> Yes and no. I think that I've had a few people on Twitter when they heard about the idea of putting um, electrical charging ports at the training ground. I had one company message me saying that they'd be really keen to do it. So obviously now I know that the message is kind of getting out there and there's people who are willing to help and willing to go in the same direction. But I think the actual, the most rewarding things I've done is when I've done on, jumped on the Zoom calls with kids at school and done not so much a workshop, but they're obviously learning about climate change and what they can do at home and making it fun and actually seeing that the kids are like interacting with it and you're getting some feedback from them. Right then, lads. Uh, first time I think we've all been together for this moment for a while. It is Moment of the Week with Boost Drinks. Yay! Boost. Yay! Go, boost, go, boost, go. Right then, lads, I'm excited to get your thoughts on these suggestions. At click underscore business says moment of the week has to be Calvin Phillips taking out Andre Mariner in the Spurs game. What are we saying? Oh, I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm funny. a big fan of that bit. <laughs> Just watching uh, it. It wasn't a little gentle nudge either, was it? He's, he's no. actually left a little bit on him. Just uh. Andre's a good ref, though. Like, he took it well, I think. So, he is, yeah, he's he was a good guy. Right. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Roberto it. said, undoubtedly, the moment of the week for me was McKinstry making his debut. We've got so many injuries right now, so it's good to see the young blood coming through. What Roberto what says there is kind of echoed what, what you said, said earlier, hasn't it, Matt, about, about the youngsters coming through and just what a good job they're doing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's an immense amount of pressure. It would have been hard work in the Championship, but to come and do it in the Premier League is, is, is extraordinary. And none of them look daunted by it even slightly. Um, you know, that's my, my impression watching them anyway. They all look like they're fired up, ready for it. None of them look out of their depth. And um, yeah, it's fantastic. The future is really, really bright, I think. And Leeds have done a, a great job at, um, at, at at laying those foundations for the future. I mean, the under 23s have been going from success to success. And I think um, that's uh, not only is it a credit to those younger lads, but also just the club that have, have made that possible. Um, I'm going to ask you for your suggestions for moment of the week shortly. But firstly, who is your winner? Is it click underscore business talking about Calvin Phillips taking out Andre Mariner? <laughs> or is it Roberto talking about McKinstry making his debut and uh, the young blood coming through? What are we saying, boys? I'm going to go for, as funny as the Calvin thing was, it's nice to see like young players getting a chance. So I'm going to go for the young yeah. lads. You're yeah, going for Roberto, agreed. Matt and Jermaine? Yep, I agree. Oh, Matt, Matt, what, Matt definitely wants to go for Calvin taking out Andre. I mean, I'm definitely going for that. I've, I, you know, he's not going <laughs> to he's not going to send me off, is he? So I'm definitely <laughs> picking Andre Mariner taking a dive. Absolutely. Jermaine, <laughs> uh, you agree with uh, Patrick though? You're I being do, nice, I, aren't you? I do. I do. I think it's it's really nice to see, um, especially when you take into account how. Um, how thin the squad is currently and, and to see the young boys coming in and really getting stuck in and, and playing with a point to prove, play, playing with like with the utmost amount of confidence as well. And it's all about mindset and mentality and they, they all seem to have it. So it's, it's yeah, I think that's that's good for me. I'm, I'm green light with that. Absolutely. That means, Roberto, you are our winner. You've got yourself a crate of boost drinks. Well done, my love. Right, guys, have you got any suggestions of your own for moment of the week? I absolutely do. I, I do have one on. that I think would have won the boost drinks if, if it was allowed. Um, I don't know if everyone's been following this, but this weekend, um, Kevin fin Sir Kevin Sinfield um, has, has run 101 miles inside 24 hours. Uh, he's run, you know, constantly. He's gone through the night, um, and he's run from from Leicester to Leeds, 101 miles to Headingley Stadium, um, all to raise money for you know, the MND uh, Society um, and for and for Rob Burrow, um, which is just 
extraordinary, an extraordinary feat. Um, I mean, it's not that it's, he's done crazy things or trying to raise money for Rob, um, but this has to be one of the absolute pinnacle achievements. I mean, 101 miles is not something I ever want to do, ever, never mind in 24 <laughs> hours. I just think that's, that's remarkable. What a guy, inspirational. Deserves a round of applause, that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That is incredible, incredible, yeah. Kev. So that's my now moment of the week, by is... boost drinks. Can we send Kev well, some boost drinks? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Kev, we're going to send you some boost drinks. There you go. They're gonna, we'll send them out in the post here. I'll probably um, have to pay for probably, him, but it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> and he probably could have done with them when he was running 101 miles <laughs> yeah, not afterwards, right. couldn't he? he? All leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Right, it is the time of the week that we've all been waiting for. What's that, Pat? No, I have actually been waiting for this. Have you, Amazing. Uh, <laughs> have, have you got the jingle again, Matt? No. Oh, okay. Well, we'll not use that then. <laughs> Pat, are you ready for this? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, this one's got a bit of a film tinge to it, okay? So, Matt, feel free to contribute as well. I'll just sit here then. <laughs> With your newfound advert career, you could probably get involved as well, can't you? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, LUFC. <laughs> right, at LUFC fan Jeff from New England asks, would Patrick rather make successful franchise movies that make him famous or do passion projects and have fame only within the film community? Consider money is better in the franchise flicks. Am I just producing producing the film? No, you're, you're in it. I'm in oh, it. Oh, is he in it as well? So yeah. pr- producing and star. <laughs> yeah, all of the man. above. He wrote the theme Producer, too. yeah. I know what I'll do. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I am not that into films and stuff, so take the one with the most money, I'm going to be honest. Mm. Um, Understandable. Like I, The way I'm looking at it is the the films that aren't franchise films, I'm, I'm thinking more like indie films, that not unless you're in the film industry. And then the franchise ones, I'm thinking Harry Potter. Would I like to be in Harry Potter? Arguably, yeah. Who would you play <laughs> in Harry Potter? How's this? Um, Neville Longbottom. <laughs> Neville Longbottom. I think I do a great job as him. Good, good, good job of that. Oh, that funny Irish geezer, Seamus. <laughs> Take him as well. <laughs> Go on, do your do um, your Irish accent. Let's hear it. Let's offend some more people in this episode. Uh, no, well, he'd have to turn English, wouldn't he? Can do I can't do an Irish. Yeah, that, that's done it. That's done it. Thank you. <laughs> the job's yours. If Seamus doesn't work out, then Neville, this remake, could it be open for it? But yeah, can you do can you do Leeds accent? Can you do Leeds accent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <'cause it's> <laughs> Amazing. Well, it's there official. We there is nothing Patrick Bamford can't do. <laughs> LUFC fan Jeff, you got your answer though in a roundabout way. So thank you very much. Please do keep your what's that Pat questions coming in, and we'll make sure that we put them to him. Use the hashtag LUFC Pod as always. Uh, in fact, that could be a new feature actually. What accent is Pat doing? All leads, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Just before we head off, let's welcome to the podcast Steve Wignall, who's chair of Marching Out Together, who's going to tell us all about the very important Rainbow Laces campaign. So Rainbow Laces is uh, run every year across a couple of weekends in the Premier League and in the EFL. And it's a campaign to increase LGBT plus inclusion uh, across the sport. So it's um, a very visual campaign uh, just to get people talking and, and to um, just talk about the, the issues that, you know, LGBT plus people face uh, within sport and I think um, it's a great campaign that's been going a number of years now it's um, it's really engaging and I think every year uh, Leeds United we, we build on it and uh, we're really proud of marching out together of the work we do. 100% within the Premier League in all the teams there's going to be people who are gay but haven't felt like they can come out and they don't really want to publicise it and I think that All that the players can do is when they get asked in interviews and obviously it's becoming a more popular topic um, is just show that them and the rest of their teammates would be completely supportive. Like it wouldn't, I think a lot of people who, or people who maybe are thinking, should I come out? Shouldn't I? Are worried about whether the, the way people look at them or see them will change. But 
ultimately it doesn't change what they, who they are as a person. So and I think that the way that the tide's kind of shifting is that nowadays it's, it's the older generations who really frowned upon it and kind of gave it that or put that stigma around it that it was something that was kind of to be looked down on and frowned upon. Whereas now everyone's changing this, this perception of being gay. And I think that it's becoming a thing where people are more comfortable around it. And I think as long as we keep going along that kind of pathway, eventually it will not be a news story, as Steve said. And that's the aim at the end of the day, isn't it? That no one Absolutely. feels like they, they have to, to say that they're different. And we need people to be strong and, and you know, stick their head above the parapet and, and call it out and just say, it's not acceptable anymore. We're in 2021 now. And uh, and that language needs to not be in the football ground and not be in your vocabulary anymore. And, and I know members who have marched out together who have done that. And it's an incredibly brave thing to do. Um, but again, the club have been really supportive of us of us on that and have dealt with any situations that that we've highlighted where it's been totally unacceptable this is the official leeds united podcast